Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the second day of the um, Computing Systems Week, which is the Virtual Computing Systems Week, organized by uh, our colleagues from the University of Tampere. My name is Kunde Bossere, I'm the coordinator of the Hypeak Network, who is organizing uh, this event. Uh, today is the second day of our uh, meeting, um, and its theme is Innovation and Technology Transfer. And I'm very pleased that we have today two uh, excellent keynote speakers. Um, the first one is uh, Marco Marcola, who is the former president and now the vice president of the European uh, Committees of the Regions, uh, which is an institution which is not very well known uh, to most of us, but nevertheless uh, has a, plays a very important role in, in Europe um, and in the more than 100 uh, regions there are in Europe. <laughs> Uh, it's a bit of an unusual choice to have a uh, former president and a vice president of, of this kind of committee in our community, but we, I believe that he has a very important message uh, for us in what the role can be of uh, cities and regions in, in the, the future of Europe. Um, Mr. Markla is uh, interested in many topics that are also uh, interesting for us, like sustainability, digitalization, knowledge creation, innovation startups, uh, single market. So this is all very relevant for this high peak community. Um, I will no longer uh, take his time because we only have half an hour. I would invite you to use the Q&A function of Zoom to ask questions at the end. It will be five minutes for Q&A. But if you have questions, please uh, mention them there. I also, also follow this event on, high, on uh, Twitter. There is uh, the high peak uh, Twitter account. And you also have the Twitter handle CSW Autumn 20. Uh, Marco, the floor is yours for your presentation. I will uh, share uh, the screen. Uh, like this. And get you. All right. There you Thank go. you. Thank you, Cohen. And uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm really uh, pleased to have a chance to deliver you uh, this uh, keynote. So it's more about the role of cities and especially the changing role of cities and looking on that, what are the critical success factors when we are moving to have more and more of what we today call place-based uh, innovation ecosystems and how we can use that in, in providing the services. And of course, digitalization plays a crucial role on, on that. And this is important, I think, for you as well, so that to see the uh, bigger picture, the frame for your own activities. And I think this is, uh, from that perspective, this is relevant. I will go through my presentations uh, quite fast. Uh, I'll stop a bit more on some of the slides and go through some of the others. Uh, faster and uh, and uh, then i provided this uh, set of slides for your information as well uh, but let's let's start this uh, so that we can look the uh, the overall uh, situation if i will let's say get the slides moving on Not yet, but uh, let me there, Cohen is, is fixing that. So uh, uh, first that uh, this week already at the previous week and the next week, it's a special European week of regions and cities. And uh, on that, so I have had the chance to participate as well in our own committee of the region plenary. Uh, we have uh, more than 300 members, mayors, regional presidents, uh, councillors from all parts of Europe. And there, in addition to the plenary where we had, among others, Ursula von der Leyen, we had Angela Merkel addressing and several commissioners. So we have had uh, this week several seminars as well. And I took one of those slides uh, uh, modifying a bit so that giving kind of in, this, in the beginning already uh, uh, the clear message, what are my key messages for you? And uh, I think this is uh, especially relevant since the, the role of cities is really changing very much. 
the whole Europe is more to be seen as a bottom-up activity because the action uh, dealing with uh, climate change or so now tackling COVID or whatever activities, it's re really concretely there on the level of cities. And when I talk about cities, I'm not talking about the authorities as such, but I'm talking about cities with all their citizens, meaning that the role of universities, research institutes, industry, large and small, all different communities that is crucial for the city and city is kind of orchestrator of these activities and uh, as i hear with these uh, key messages i define it very strongly that digitalization it's actually happening very strongly right now and i think this covid crisis pandemia shows us that we need to do more in our own daily practices as well as digitalization as we are doing in many of our cities uh, around Europe. So we are embedding that in our own, all processes, but it's not keeping the processes at as such, but we it changes. And that's why these uh, other four uh, key messages, place-based ecosystems, we look all the time value and value networking. We want to catalyze different kinds of innovations, not only technological or social, but societal. So changing the rules and procedures, decision making as well. We focus more on encouraging entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, we do experiment, uh, testing, rapid prototyping and then scaling up all these and all the time looking more and more what added value we can get uh, through European collaboration and partnership. And uh, uh, then uh, when we look, looking here, the, the let's say the traditional role of cities, uh, it was providing services in taking care of the needs of citizens, like building the infrastructure, providing schools and healthcare and other services, but that's not anymore the case since uh, the uh, globalization and of course digitalized have changed so much cities really cannot afford all of those services that the technology or business practices are providing and that means that uh, cities need to build the future more on the local collaboration mentality and partnership and if we move further Yes, here I took another example of this week, actually yesterday, uh, the Joint Research Center with the EIT Climate Kick, they can uh, announce that they are in the process to have soon ready the handbook, how to do the co-creation. And for you, linking this, what uh, uh, Commissioner First Vice President Timmerman said uh, uh, yeah, on Tuesday in our plenary, that the Committee of the Region is for the Green Deal, the channel to regions and cities or cities and regions. And there we are really moving quite fast and we need to move fast, but there we need the help of everyone. And that's why I here kind of showcase that it's about say, how to develop the social and societal communities. And on that, we need a lot of guidebooks and, and uh, and the handbooks and so on. And this is very useful so that we share the knowledge that we have. We move more to the collaboration con uh, mentality. All right, uh, let's try to move. Yeah, here I took an example so that the, the Joint Research Center already three years ago, they made the, their first uh, kind of guidebook or documentation analytical study on the, what does place-based innovation ecosystem mean and that was let's say my community what we call the espo innovation garden espo the uh, second largest city in finland part of the metropolitan region and uh, that is really strongly operating uh, the city with the alta university with the technical research center of finland and a lot of of, of, uh, of uh, the different companies head offices of many international companies are are here in our let's say the core area of espo innovation garden which is 
uh, or part of that is the Alta University campus, part is it's the industrial business area with the headquarters of Coned, the elevator company, Fortum, the largest Nordic energy company. Nokia used to be there, now Nokia moved a bit another place after the, the, the changes in their structures. And, but there are many, many others as well. And here are a few of the key, let's say, success factors that the uh, Joint Research Center study wanted to highlight. So that uh, this is an example. We have more than 100 different nationalities there. It attracts a lot of talents as well. So, so it's really a, a place, uh, and actually place next to the sea, uh, Espo. Here, yeah, you can move to the next slide as well. So. Here, I want to show that a bit more about the ESPO kind of frame for that. So the, the blue on the uh, bottom up, so that is the, the bottom side, so that is the sea. We have the archipelago Gulf of Finland in the Baltic Sea. We have in ESPO 165 islands. Uh, we have the seashore more than 50 kilometers. And in the north, we have the national park but now what we have been uh, investing heavily is to uh, uh, integrate better the downtown Helsinki, the capital of Finland, to Espo with the 21 kilometer long uh, extension of the metro line. And in the center of the city, we have the traditional uh, railway. And now we are building as well a, a light rail system to connect these two rails. So it's really investing heavily on the, the rails, and that is one of the instruments to challenge or tackle the climate change. But that means as well that when we develop the city, so we look at different parts of the city kind of separately. We have five city centers, so it is, it, this is really a typically a network city and a forerunner on, on, on a sustainability, not only economic and ecological sustainability, but social and cultural dimensions as, as well. Uh, key questions in my next slide. So then I have there, so uh, the, uh, uh, because if you look as well from the digitalization perspective, I think uh, you could and should go through these questions as well. So where, the, where does the digitalization play a crucial role? I just started to, to write the questions and most of them are questions of how. So it's not uh, about that we would not know or all around in Europe. We know where we want to go more or less, but how to get there and how to be, let's say, instrumental in making this transformation uh, to, to happen. And there, uh, even today when we are tackling the COVID-19, so we should actually see the climate issue with the same emergency. So strong commitment, not only produce papers, but move actions to actions everywhere. And that means the, the mentality, the mental change and as well. And so that means that we need to be able everywhere to answer these questions. I'll, I'll pr produce a few uh, answers to those. Uh, and if we move now to the next uh, slide, uh, so uh, this is uh, what I was involved uh, a couple of years ago with DG Grow and uh, with several consultancy companies and experts from around. And I think this summarizes very nicely the, the need for accelerating the digital transformation. And their recommendations, we are looking on this, let's say what we have there on this part of the circle, but on, at the bottom, there as well, so that we need to accelerate the use of big data and moving based on that, creating the digital platforms. Actually, they are very much close to this uh, place-based innovation ecosystem idea. Then we need to reskill the workforce, or digital skills especially, and then what I highlighted with yellow, the cities and city-driven regions, they are and they should be more and more kind of launch pads for digital transformation. And on that, we need different instruments and books, tool, toolkits uh, to operate as ambassadors. And you should 
look review that as well. Um, how to do that? So let's take the next. I think this is crucial as well. So city, we need to see the city in, uh, uh, let's say, different systems. The traditional urban, urban planning system, urban infrastructure system, social systems, governance systems, and uh, different systems of economy. And then we need to provide these uh, collaboration partnerships, uh, knowledge flow, knowledge co-creation processes, and city is actually and should be the uh, systems innovator. And I'll uh, show a bit more what does that mean in the next uh, couple of slides. So let's take first this so that it's interesting to look what the commission is stressing the cities to focus. And I took uh, here this and the second slide as well. So what are the criteria and have been the criteria for innovation capital? Uh, first, in the part of the pilot phase, Bar Barcelona, the winner, uh, and then uh, Amsterdam, and so on. So uh, the key focus areas were innovative, inspiring, integrated, interactive, and impactful. So Im impact and influencing is the key. And if we take the next slide with the with the criteria used uh, now in the recent years. So it's kind of moving further on from those uh, inspiring innovation elements to experimenting, engaging citizens and industry, universities, researchers, all, and expanding the, the let's say, the scope and responsibility of cities' potential role to attract and uh, make this transformation a reality. So this digital transformation reality and that means empowering and on that uh, again uh, a couple of the slides about that so what does that really mean here first uh, i i kind of take this slide in a, a couple of layers so first i was looking that uh, i did this already a couple of years with a, a good interesting team about ecosystem orchestrating orchestration it means about networking uh, centric working culture ecosystem architecture targeted or or orchestration of all operations and collective value creation and when i have the map of the europe there back so let's click on the next uh, elements that i bring to that so that's kind of management capabilities, looking as traditionally management is looking inside the system, inside the organization, and that fits to the city or whatever business organization as well, and linked to those. So it's more really user centricity, concept development, uh, innovative core processes. So developing the processes with digitalization and then networking engagement. But if we then, then uh, take the, let's say, the, a bit more modern look with uh, clicking that uh, uh, further. So then we come to the leadership aspect. So leadership needs to look much outside the box or outside the organization. And there again, so these uh, capabilities, foresight, actually uh, a month ago, commission published the first annual uh, commission EU foresight uh, report that's very interesting to read, but we don't have time to go to that. And then there is, of course, sustainability, kind of life cycle, agility, and cultural fostering. And this needs to be, we click one more. So then kind of how to integrate this, how to move to the next phase. So uh, go and go ahead. So one more, yes. Because now when we integrate this, so start seeing the organization, whatever, if that is a company or if that is a university or city, it needs to be seen as a globally operating innovation platform for joint, uh, what I say here, especially university society interface operations. So we need to react and get the others outside the, the organization to assist in the process. And I, I've used this quite much in thinking uh, different aspects, what are the change processes, especially from the perspective of change management. 
And then moving ahead to the other parts of the slide. So here defining, uh, giving uh, ideas for thinking. Uh, so a systematic approach to the challenges. I took here three major angles and four major elements or actors in each of those. So seeing the, we don't, uh, we are not allowed to operate in a silo anymore or our own sandbox. We need to see the as a living environment, working environment, learning environment, but as well as a digitalized innovation platform. Or then we need to co-create synergy between these different actor groups. And we need uh, to look the working environment, how that this creates conditions for change management. And again, their digitalization is the strong support instrument in experimenting, piloting, rapid prototype. And I have the SDGs there on the so showing that we need to have the broad responsibility. A couple of more slides. Uh, uh, so City as a platform, the Technical Research Center of Finland already several years ago made uh, analyses of that. So what does it mean? And especially on the right side, you have the open digital sandbox. Uh, so to element provision of open public data and interfaces, facilitation of smart service development, creating these digitalized innovation platforms and promotion of standards and interoperability. And then uh, further on in the next slide, so then I have this and then the next slide, so trying to describe this should take a, a couple of more minutes for you thinking, but you can take this later on so that what does and how we can move to this orchestration. There is in the middle on the brown, so there is a regional innovation, smart specialization and kind of digitalized innovation platforms and that where we are focusing very strong at the EU and the city level in many cities at the moment. And then we want to enable this through orchestration, looking the uh, different actors and I've described in the next slide uh, a bit that. So if we have a kind of, uh, when we look the different uh, typically separate activities, but they need to be you now orchestrated we need to have this kind of in focus on renewal capital, informal networking and systemic, systematic uh, operationalization. And then God, if you click there further, so we have the, the new roles of people. We don't need just the uh, traditional facilitators or tra traditional uh, management, but we need to orchestrate a person or persons. We need architects to, to make the vision tangible and visible. We need the preachers engaging the different stakeholders and uh, facilitating the processes. We need conductors harmonizing and the use of that different instruments and curators uh, designing the concepts. So sharing and co-creating a lot on that. And so I think this is something that everywhere should be going on. And this cannot be done properly without the effective digitalization. Okay, take the next one. Here I just kind of summed up so that these are not new activities as such. Already I looked the time two and a half year period when I was the COR Committee of the Region President. So at that time uh, we were, uh, uh, among others, we were looking on this, uh, how to develop the attractive innovation environments and there are the key points of, of those. So I've already tackled a lot of those, so I don't want to repeat, but take the next next slide. And this is something that uh, I wanted to focus that uh, every city, or in our case, this when we look, we analyze the Espo Innovation Garden uh, with all my, let's say, historical perspective, I use the, the strategic diamond concept, some of the researchers are familiar with that, but it looks on so that the questions, what we have, where we focus at the moment, uh, what does it take to win? So what is the ESPO today and where we want to, to go by what we do and what is our leadership, how we lead? And, and um, there you have the key elements of how this kind of uh, 
focused orchestrated activity of all actors is going on. And I don't mean that every person in every organ they would know this, but it's keeping with the political level. We need to keep this uh, potential uh, change development ongoing. And I added uh, there as well, I don't uh, want, there are three uh, additional slides about very recently, just a couple of weeks ago, published report on the Baltic Sea where the smart specialization uh, people around the Baltics work for three years, organizing innovation camps uh, and analyzed different regions uh, from uh, the uh, sustainable development perspectives and, and link the results to this uh, strategic diamond. I have here Helsinki region, but then the next slide is, I think it's uh, Aarhus, uh, central Denmark, and then I have the Berlin Brandenburg as well. So, and uh, I don't go to the details, but they gave a lot of ideas how to operate with each other and how we can not only uh, benchmark uh, what the others are doing, but learn from those. Okay, thanks uh, for that. And then I think there are still is it one or two. Okay, this is the, the especially targeted to you. If we have there in the center, this is the regional in innovation ecosystem, the landscape. And on the right hand side, there's the digitalization perspective and traditional urban planning perspective. And if you click further, so you will have what typically is there is a huge gap with, with the socioeconomic ecosystem and the hardware and I ICT infrastructure. But if you click further, so it's the same in the urban planning side. So eco ecosystem of people, and then there are those uh, people, experts, professions who build the infrastructure and the environment. But we need to add there to fill the gap. And let's show what they are. I took their three additional layers clicking one more on the uh, ICT side, kind of uh, e-governance instead of just regulations. Uh, uh, usage areas, a lot happening already by smart pilots and apps. And then we are already operating very much through clouds and service supports and virtual platform. But actually the same should happen now on the urban planning side. And if you click further, so there are the kind of same kind of layers. And this is my message uh, as well, so that let's work together, create these, let's say, digitalized uh, processes, how we can really fill those gaps on the professionals and the socioeconomic ecosystem. And then uh, the final slide is just a summary. Summary that uh, we could uh, or should move to kind of dance of research with practice. We should take uh, the circular economy of knowledge, not just the materials, raw materials and so on. Uh, we need to have the ecosystem, innovation oper ecosystems operating as test beds, and then uh, link this to the coming digital innovation hubs, uh, because that's something that uh, we with the CR and I personally as well have influence on that. So being in the past, the rapporteur on, on, on that. So how we should have that as a European wide network. So that's your role to play. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for your inspiring keynotes. We have uh, five minutes left for questions. Um, first question I would like to ask is, what is according to you the biggest challenge um, for a city to start this kind of um, vision, implementation, whatever. Uh, is it creating the vision? Is it the money that you need in order to do things? What's the biggest challenge? Um, it's not actually the money. Money, of course, is, is good uh, support for the change and needed in the transformation. But uh, the, the key is really the, the mentality, the mindset seeing that in each city we cannot solve the problems by ourselves. We need to share the practices. We need to start this kind of bench learning or bench acting. So with the other cities uh, 
and uh, we need more experts, uh, but as well the political decision making, both the mayors and mayors level and the board level, city council levels, we need to take this as a learning process our, ourselves. And that's an ongoing. Uh, luckily, in most of the countries, so we have the election system, so the same people operate for four years or in some case five years or so. So we should build that the kind of roadmap for the learning and how we start operating this way, encouraging the, the as I said, the citizens, industry, large and small universe to be operating with us. And, and does the committee of the regions help the cities? Region? Yeah, we do. And especially now, uh, during the last five years, we've increased a lot collaboration with the EU Joint Research Center with them uh, and when they their role is to support through research they have close to 3000 researchers on their payroll their role has to be to to support the, the political decision making by the commission and recently uh, support a lot the parliament but now more and more kind of science meets regions activities with the cor so we are operating much with that uh, we've uh, with the Joint Research Center, we have developed further the concept of innovation camps. They provided a handbook on that. We, with the DG RTD, we have an ongoing activity, what we call knowledge exchange platform. So operating on that. So that was launched uh, when Carlos Moedas was the commissioner and I was the president. So we kind of looked forward what is needed and that we need these instruments. and. We need then both the recovery funds and the, the uh, cohesion funds to target it to support this transformation. And there comes the money, EU money is just one part. We need to integrate public and private financing, both national and local to that as well. Yeah, and then I have a uh, last question. So you know that we are a network, so we are not regional, <laughs> we are all over Europe and uh, we are uh, well, academics and people from industry, mostly researchers from industry. What could we do in order to help in this process? Do you have an advice for us as a community? Yeah, we are not yeah, I, yeah not thanks. Uh, I have my own engineering background as well. So most uh, practically close to all of my life were from the start, time of, uh, when I was a student in the Helsinki University of Technology. I've been a member of the city council as well. And, and uh, I would say that definitely we need more of this interaction, kind of joint uh, activities. And that's why I think Maritz is going to talk about this digital innovation hubs. And that was something that we saw that we need to bring the research knowledge and researchers operating closer to the political decision making. I think that is something that we could share share a lot so because technology is an enabler digitalization is an enabler but it needs to be embedded and seeing how to have the processes so that the, the, the digitalization is not just uh, keeping the traditional working processes uh, operating as such but renewing the process culture okay so I think we can end the Q&A session here. So I would like to thank you very much for your inspiring keynotes. And, um, and I, well, I hope you will take your good advice and, and start working on it or continue working on it.